Hey, I'm Mike, otherwise known as Mr. Donahue. So this is a picture I drew yesterday. Um, it's a picture of my friends and me. And that's me in the middle. That's what I looked like when I was in high school. That's my friend Phil. That's our friend Dan. And this uh, was in Milwaukee, probably in like 2002. So uh, we were in a band. Our band was called the Scoundrels. Pretty like stereotypical punk uh, name for a band. And we played punk music. So one time we were playing a show and um, we are at this place called the Liquid Room. And they had told us if we brought in like so many people, I can't remember the exact number, it was more, somewhere around 100 people, that we get a, a slice of the money, right? We get paid. And we counted the people there. There was way more than 100 people. Way more than enough people that we needed for the amount. And we went to the owner and we're like, hey, where's our money? And he's like, I don't want, you know, there's not enough people here, blah, blah, blah. And we're like, yeah, there are. We counted. And he's like, well, they didn't all pay, and blah, blah, blah. And he was just giving us a run around, not wanting to give us any money. So we got really ticked off. So then my, we had gotten done playing our set, and my friend Reese's band got up. And we wrote our own song on stage called The Liquid Room Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and we played it for him. It was pretty funny. We were like, The Liquid Room Sucks, The Liquid Room Sucks. And that was <laughs> the whole song. It was all it was. And um, we kind of started a mini riot inside of this venue. It was like a little coffee place. It wasn't very big. But there were a lot of angry teenagers in there at one time. Um, and you get a lot of angry teenagers together that are punk, then they like to cause destruction. And uh, I just remember one guy ripped the toilet seat off the toilet <laughs> and it came in. He's like, yeah, I got the toilet seat. <laughs> um, I didn't do, I don't, I don't, I did not destroy anything, but we're just, we're basically trying to tell people not to come there anymore. But it's a funny scenario. Hey, hey, it's Mr. Donahue. So a student forgot my name and I was really angry. Not really, I was kind of joking around. But I was like, whatever, I can't forget my name. So I went over here and I grabbed this big jug of paint and paintbrush and just like doused it in paint and wrote my name on the wall in blood so they wouldn't forget it. The CDs are there because some kid thought it'd be cool to glue CDs to the wall um, with the glue gun. The glue gun's in there. And they put a hanger on the wall and some guitar picks. And they put a bunch of other stuff on the wall too. At one point we had the broom glued to the wall. There's some nickels glued to the ball wall either over there too. So yeah, gluing stuff to the wall works. And that's why my name's there. I'm Mr. Donnie or Mike. So there's a car on fire. That's me in high school. So when I was in ninth grade, my brother and his friends, they were like a couple years older than me, and they were trying to raise money for their senior trip. And so one of the things they came up with this genius idea that they would have a car bash. What that was were people would pay money to like beat on an old car. And they got a car donated to them, brought it to the school parking lot. We went to this small private school in Michigan and there was this big parking lot of this church where the school was. So they put the car at one end of the parking lot and put a tarp underneath it. They even corded it off and had cones and they had a table with like a crowbar and a baseball bat and a sledgehammer and all the stuff you could use to beat on the car with. So we all went out there after school they got it approved by the school somehow. Um, I'm sure the school really regrets doing that. And <laughs> we all sat around, the, like the whole school came out. There wasn't that many kids at the school. It was like 200 kids at the school. So most of the kids are all out there around this car. There's a couple teachers. And I had the genius idea that morning. I was like, dude, 
I have this giant smoke bomb. It looked like a stick of dynamite. It was called mammoth smoke. And I was like, man, I could throw this in the car and it would fill up with smoke. And we look cool when we're like beating it up and breaking the windows. And Dan was like, yeah, good idea, man. So I bring this thing out to the school, you know, in my backpack. I had it with me all day. And we get out there and I, I'm lighting the thing. This is right before it starts. And I'm sitting there with a lighter lighting this thing. And one of the teachers, Mr. Lyon, sees me. And he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, uh, lighting a smoke bomb? <laughs> and it was like already lit, I think. And he's just like, whatever. Like, <laughs> just let it happen. So I throw it in the car, close the door. This kid, Joey, I remember, he, he was the first kid to hit the car. And he was pretty big and like pretty muscular. And so he got the sledgehammer and he was going to go for the windshield first. And so he just starts smashing the windshield and there's smoke in the car. And I'm like, this is cool, you know. And he can't break the windshield because windshields don't break very easily. And it was like this beat up old little piece of junk, tiny car. Like, I don't know if it was like a Dodge Colt or something like that. Like a little small four door car, hatchback type of car. And so he can't break the front windshield. So he goes around to the back. Um, the back window, and he just winds up to hit as hard as he's been hitting the, the windshield, and he smashes it. Now, by this time, I'm watching the car, and I'm like, there's a lot of smoke in that car. Some of that smoke is black. It just, it's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> so he smashes out the back window. He hits it so hard, the sledgehammer flies into the back seat of the car. <laughs> so he reaches in to the car to pull out the sledgehammer through the broken window. Why well, I didn't open the door, I don't know. But he reaches in and he just jumps out real quick without the sledgehammer and he goes, the car's on fire! And now the whole school <laughs> screams, like, ah, everyone's freaking out. And the car is on fire and there's like black smoke just billowing out of this car. And so someone runs back way across the parking lot. It was probably 200 yards. I mean, it's a huge parking lot back to the school to get the fire extinguisher. By the time they get there and come back, the car is totally engulfed in flames and they have to call the uh, fire department. The principal, I remember, he walks back to the school, just sees what's going on, is just like, whatever. And he walks walks away, and we see him, like, go into his his office, and he just, like, closed the blinds. <laughs> <laughs> and the fire department shows up, and by the time the fire department gets there, like, the flames are higher than the fire truck. Like, they're just huge. Like, the car is totally burnt to a crisp. <laughs> and, like, the next day we came there, and, like, I don't think they had taken the car away yet the next morning. And so we were like looking around for things. I remember my friend got the lighter and I was like kind of jealous. I was like, man, I wanted the lighter. I wanted to let the car on fire. And the car, like the wheels had all popped and melted to, the rubber had melted to the uh, pavement. Like the, the tarp that it was on was completely melted. Like the car was completely black charred to a crisp. And I didn't get kicked out of school for that. I did get kicked out of school the next year, but for something totally different. <laughs> So this is the tape man. We uh, got him from the art room. I guess the art students made him. It's kind of cool. I guess they, it's a model of a person. And you do a body part by body part where you tape, and you put the tape on backwards. And it's like big like, tape for putting on boxes and stuff, like the big thick stuff, wide, clear tape. Put it on back, backwards, so sticky side out. And then you do another layer where you stick the tape to itself. You put sticky side to sticky side, and that creates like a thicker thing. It's still pretty malleable, but um, that's what made it like this. So they do it like part by part, and then they, they um, then they tape the pieces together. So you do like one arm, and then you cut, you actually cut that off, your arm, and then you tape it back together, and then do the torso, tape that right there. So that's how this guy was created. And I had a Black Panther suit that I had bought uh, a couple years ago for Halloween. And I wore that to school one day and then somehow ended up being left here at the school. So we were wanting to clothe our tape man, so we put a Black Panther suit on him. He actually was sitting in a desk for a while and that was scaring some students because he looked real and we also had a hoodie on him so like his head was down and he was like a, just a student sitting there on the desk and we'd like surprise people. He could actually like 
if I saw that many. I don't know. But he's like this. I've got uh, Mr. Miller, who retired, and Justin Bieber. <laughs> and the reason I have a mirror for Justin Bieber is so that you can be the Bieber if you feel the need. Just look in there and go, baby, baby, baby. Pretty great. Be the Bieber. <laughs> I don't wear that uh, hoodie one. No idea. Just disappeared. Random thoughts. So, with teaching students, I think I've come to realize that, and I think I've always kind of believed this, but that I realize it more that the students are more important than the subject. The content that I'm teaching, and I think any teacher would tell you that. Like that's the, like students are important. But is my phone ringing, or is it just text messages? Text <laughs> messages, yeah. <laughs> the slave to my phone. <laughs> yeah. So students are way more important than the content they're you're being you're trying to communicate to them. Is an important, I think, though, philosophy to come at teaching that way. That like, yeah, we all know that anyone would say that, of course. But really believing that, like. These kids are more important than whatever I'm trying to teach. And getting to know them. And I love English for that reason that English is all about telling stories. So if I can break them into my story and tell them about my story, then they might feel comfortable to share some of their story. And sometimes it sucks. Like sometimes kids have stories from their lives that are really terrible. Really, really awful. And letting them embrace that a little bit and say, yeah, it's part of my story, it's part of who I am, but it's not all that I am. And that if there is brokenness and hurt, that it's not, that is not the end of my story. And that whatever traumatic event you've experienced doesn't have to define you. And that's, that's been a powerful thing for myself, but also for helping other students see that with themselves too. And give an example, I had a student uh, a few years ago that shared a really hard story from, from his life and it was, it was so sad and it was just traumatizing really. I can't even go into detail really about it but it was like wow I can't believe he wrote that you know and I was reading the journals and I have students write journals and some of the prompts will be about tell a story from your life um, and it was really really hard to read what he wrote and then talk to him about it later but he's like yeah, writing that helped. You know, writing that, telling that story really helped. Uh, and that felt good to be a part of something that helped him deal with this traumatic thing in his life. Um, and other parts of just being silly, being fun, having fun uh, in class, I think is important too. Uh, that students enjoy school and they have something to look forward to even in a class that, you know, sometimes is, English can be boring for some people. Um, they're not really into it. Uh, but trying to make it as fun as possible. Um, maybe that's just for my own entertainment. <laughs> but I think students uh, like that too. And if you're able to have fun in class, I honestly think you're more able to learn. But even if you're not, like, <laughs> that sounds, it's like, even if this doesn't help your education, like, as far as my content goes, like, are you enjoying yourself? As a person, like that matters, you know. If you're like, all, if you have to go to seven hours a day of sucking, of just life being terrible, in in the classroom, like that's that's awful. I, I don't think that that's the way school should be. Like you don't want your job to be that way. If you go to your job and hate every single minute of it, like 
get a new job, you know? So if you go to school, and like students don't have a choice about going to school, and, and they don't have a choice, most of them don't have a choice about what school they go to. So they're stuck here, and if they hate every single class, like that's awful. So I hope that they can enjoy my class, and I hope that helps them with being able to learn better. But even if it doesn't, I just hope that they enjoy it. So those are some of my, some of the few things I know about teaching for me that seem to work. So, these are some of the books we're reading in my class. And last year, really, beginning of last year, I wanted to focus more on uh, African American literature. So, I uh, did some fundraisers and was able to raise some money to get more books that are written by African American authors. One of them that uh, students are really excited about, I'm excited about, is A Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. Really cool book. We'll be able to get the hardcover which was pretty awesome, and we got about, I don't know, 30 of these. So this book is written as a giant poem, and it's the story of a, of a high school student, a high school age student that's uh, had his brother been murdered, and he wants revenge for it. Pretty intense, really cool book. Uh, another of the classics is Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass that we're reading. This is a really amazing autobiography. I a song out of him, too. <laughs> oh, that's right. Steve, Steve wrote, a, wrote a rap about him. That was awesome. Great video. Yeah, you got to put like a, a link to that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, great book. We're also reading If I Grow Up by Todd Strasser. Now, Todd Strasser is white. He's not a, but it's a story about um, the urban community in Chicago in the projects and... Um, the protagonist is black. Almost all the characters in the book are black. And it's kind of like they're in this bubble in Chicago where things are so different there than they are in the rest of the city and how their life plays out. It's really a cool book. This one, Walter Dean Myers wrote this, and he's probably one of the most famous young adult authors. Uh, he happens to be black as well, and he wrote this story about a young man who uh, is facing the judicial system in New York City. So, kind of how black youths are portrayed. This was also done, I was able to get a, a classroom set of graphic novels of this book, which is pretty cool. So, it's all pretty, pretty neat. I've seen how the different characters uh, act out in the story. It's just a lot of cool stuff. So, really enjoyed this book. Super cool. And they also made a movie of this too. So. Um, then we've got The Pigman, this is not an African American book either, but it's a classic young adult novel about um, some kids that feel like outcasts, they feel like they don't fit in, and they're trying to figure out their lives, and they meet an old guy who, who helps them come to an understanding of themselves, and it's a cool book, I really like this one a lot. Also got some more of these, I've got book two and three as well, and this is the story of John Lewis's life, so this is an autobiography as well, he writes this uh, with two others, uh, an illustrator and another author, and it goes through the story of his life from growing up in a farm in Alabama and participating in sit-ins. It's written, uh, it's all a graphic novel too, which is pretty cool. So, and then books two and three go all the way through the civil rights movement, which is pretty awesome. So, um, this is a really educational book, um, but a very unique story. So, highly recommend these. These have been cool. I uh, also got another one by Walter Dean Myers, Slam, um, which is a story about a kid named Slam who's a basketball player and facing some issues. Um, I was trying to get some more sports books. I was realizing that, that I don't have a lot of books on sports. So trying to find some more sports-based books that are interesting. So, yeah, I've got lots of other random books. I've, like So those are some of the ones I teach as a whole to the whole class, of course, I do you know Shakespeare, Julius Caesar, and um, Huckleberry Finn, and Scarlet Letter as well. But um, these are some new ones. Um, I was already doing narrative life for August, but some of these others are newer ones. That I was able to get classroom sets up that have been really cool. So it's been fun. Yeah, back in my day, we used to make videos. We made a video of of a foreign film. Man, I must have been 
18, maybe younger. And I was a French guy. I don't know French. But they had me dubbed over in French. They just had me move my mouth a lot, and I ran off a bridge, is what I remember. I was wearing a tie. That was my foreign film. <laughs>